Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Today, we are going to talk about the five things I loved and hated on The Caribbean Princess. My name is Haley. I am the writer and co-owner of HaleyWithAFlare.com and Travel With A Flare Travel Agency. My husband works that with me, and we talk all things travel on this channel, give tips, port guides, you name it. So if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and that like button. And also don't forget to hit that alert button so you're notified whenever we post a new video. So let's get started. My husband and I did a little midwinter getaway late February. I know this video is coming out a little bit later, but we just had a lot of back-to-back -back travel. We were just now catching up and getting everything set. And I was a little nervous because we had just gotten off Enchanted Princess last year, had a great time. It was my first dip back in Princess for a while. Um, and I was a little nervous because Caribbean Princess is an older ship, but I will tell you overall, we had an absolutely fabulous time. We really enjoyed it. We actually did an interior room on this cruise because it was a great price. We did do Princess Premiere, which we talk about in another video, the difference between Plus Premiere. So if you want to see what that looks like in our other videos, make sure you check those out. So let's get started with the things that we maybe didn't like the most. So first things first, the rooms are warm. So because it's an older ship, I feel like the ventilation and the systems aren't as nice as some of the newer ships. Enchanted Princess was very cool. Um, we felt the room was a little warmer, plus it's also interior, so that could play into it. But um, overall, that's not a deal breaker because we're out and about doing so many things. And you can also grab a little portable fan. Jeff actually got me hooked on this. We usually have like the mini ones for when we go around, but this is like a little portable fan. It folds up about this big. The link is going to be over here um, and you can just collapse it and pop it up when you want to use it. And that was an easy fix to that situation. All right. Number two is going to be a smaller buffet selection. This isn't a deal breaker. We just noticed on Enchanted there was definitely a lot more variety. The food was still really good. I mean, there really wasn't a bad place to get food on this ship. But we did notice that the selection was a little smaller on this ship. Number three is the stateroom door. Again, older ship, a little trivial, but we felt like a lot of light leaked in for an interior cabin. And one of the reasons that we do occasionally enjoy sailing an interior cabin is that complete darkness for sleep. So we pushed some stuff up next to it. Again, not a deal breaker, just something that we weren't super keen on. Number four, again, we're going to stay in the stateroom here. Um, the organization in the bathroom, like where the toilet paper holder and stuff was, was a little inconvenient. I felt a little backwards when you're getting around there. But of course, you're kind of crammed for space in those style rooms anyways. But we may do. We just left our roll up on the sink. It, you know, it is what it is. Not a deal breaker. And number five, the last one in the room. As you guys can tell, the room was maybe the worst part, even though it wasn't like the worst thing ever. Um, for us was the automatic lights. There are automatic lights, at least in the interior rooms underneath the nightstand. So when my husband and I sail in an interior room, we actually split the beds because we feel like it gives more usable room in the middle of the room. But there were these lights underneath <laughs> the nightstands that just automatically trigger. They're super bright. Um, and I know they're for safety. My husband actually carries electrical tape with him for his CPAP in case something goes wrong with it. So that's what we ended up using. But even with that, it was a little annoying. It kept, you know, peeling off and stuff like that. And then there was also a light near the bathroom that just took a long time to shut off. But overall, we were very content with this cruise. So we're going to hop over to things that we actually loved about this cruise. Now, I should say none of these are in order of ways that we don't like them or love them. Um, it's just the way that we ended up writing them out for notes when we were making notes on how to make this. So for loves, number one was specialty dining. The specialty dining was fantastic on the sailing. Now, I've got to say Sabatini's was wonderful, just as good as we remembered on the Enchanted. We did try the Steakhouse this time. And I will hands down say out of all the ships I've been on, I've done a lot of Royal Caribbean. I've done a lot of Celebrity. Um, I've done Virgin. I've done um, Carnival way back in the day. And this was the best cruise ship steak I've ever had in my life. The um, steakhouse was just, it was so good. Everything, the appetizers were great. The desserts were great. The steaks were great. Service was wonderful. 
um, really, really impressed with the specialty dining venues. And we also tried, and we're going to have this in another video, they have like a short service style specialty dining, the barbecue place. Even the food might have been... I would say like my least favorite on this cruise, but it was still good. It just like, if you're ranking them, um, it was still really great. The service was wonderful. The variety was wonderful. Um, highly recommend you try the specialty dining on this ship. And also I know this isn't technically specialty dining, but I kind of feel like it is. But at the wine bar, there's actually like a charcuterie board. There's chocolate truffles. Um, they are for an extra cost, um, unless you have a package, of course. But those were really great too. So again, just really great options. All right, number two for things that we love, the venues. I loved the venues on this. And maybe I love how they do venues on older ships because I love the theming. You know, I love when a lounge looks like Egypt or something of that nature. I just think it's so fun. There were a lot of really great venues on this ship. Number three, the variety of included activities. Now I've noticed on a lot of your mass market, family friendly, um, you know, kind of in that Royal Caribbean celebrity princess carnival type cruising. A lot of the activities that used to be free on board um, are not quite as plentiful these days, but this sailing had a ton of included activities and not just, you know, a random craft of the day or a random trivia. There were, I mean, a ton of different trivias throughout the ship variety of music, um, different arts and crafts classes, different cocktail classes, like, and all stuff that was actually included in the cruise, which was really nice to see. So big fan of that. And probably our favorite activity was called like Voice of the Ocean. And it is legitimately like the show, The Voice, if you watch that, they have contestants audition the first day or two of the cruise. Then on one of the last days, they even have like the chairs where they spin around. It is really, really cool. A whole lot of fun and very unique. Really loved seeing that. Number four, these are for my adults out there. There were two adult only pools. One was in the spa area, then one was on the back of the ship. They were definitely the best pools. Loved these venues. They were honestly not very busy the entire time that we were on this ship. And this ship was sold out too when we were sailing. And last but certainly not least, number five, we're going to go back in the room. I'm sure you guys are sick of me saying that by now. The mattresses were so comfortable. The beds were comfortable. The bedding's great. I thought this when I was on Enchanted Princess. Princess between this old ship and the Enchanted Princess in the last, you know, six months of my life here have had some of the most comfortable beds I've ever slept on at sea. They're either right close, maybe number two, or tied with the Disney Dream that I've been on. That bed was extremely comfortable. Um, but I can tell you, I've been on a variety of salients on like Royal Caribbean where the bed has just been so firm or I'm feeling like bars underneath me and I haven't had the best sleep. And it's, it's very hard for me to fall asleep. But I will tell you, this ship had extremely comfortable beds and that was a big plus for us. All right, you know that I'm probably going to throw a bonus tip in here, and this isn't maybe ship uh, specific, but I'm going to throw this bonus tip if this is your first one. The Princess Medallion Program, I love this. So if you have never cruised Princess before, this is your first video, Princess has medallions fleet wide. They're like a little kind of air tag key. Um, system you can wear it in a lanyard. Um, they come with certain room types if you have certain packages um, and whatnot. But with this um, and their app, you can open your door without having to find your key if you're wearing your lanyard. You can order um, food anywhere you are on the ship via the room service. It just it makes things so convenient. We just got off of MSC. And it was, it was wonderful. We were on the World Europa. And the one thing I did notice, and I told my husband, I was like, I never realized how much, like, the medallions made kind of your life so much easier when you're on vacation. It's very trivial things, not deal breaker things, but love the princess medallion system. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Feel free to leave questions, comments, um, or things you've experienced down below. Would love to see it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.